Welcome to the VMware Cloud on AWS Quick Start Series. It's important to understand some basic constructs and requirements prior to deploying your SDDC. I'm Jeremiah McGee with VMware, and in this video, I'm going to provide you with an overview of that information so you can deploy your SDDC without delay in VMware Cloud on AWS. The VMware Cloud organization is a top-level construct containing one or more cloud services. This organization could apply to the company overall, to a group or a business unit within the company that's subscribing to the service. The customer's My VMware account is used to create the organization and gives the account holder the organization owner role. Owners can create host subscriptions at the org level, as well as invite other users and assign roles. Users can be associated with multiple organizations and can hold different roles within each of them. The VMware Cloud SDDC resides inside of an organization. This is a self-contained instance of VMware's vSphere platform delivered as a service. The SDDC includes a set of management appliances, which include vCenter and NSXT, and is fully managed and supported by VMware. Dedicated bare metal EC2 hosts will make up the vSphere clusters inside of the SDDC and are imaged with the newest builds of the VMware ESXi hypervisor. SDDCs have high-speed access to native AWS services hosted with a separate customer-owned AWS account. Native AWS services are billed to the customer-owned AWS account and are not managed by VMware. An organization can contain multiple SDDCs, and each SDDC can contain many vSphere clusters. There are two vSphere cluster deployment options available. A standard cluster provides three nines of availability and restricts all hosts to a single availability zone within a region. This is suitable for most workloads and offers a nice balance of risk and cost. A stretch cluster provides four nines of availability and places hosts across two availability zones within a region. A vSAN witness is deployed in a third availability zone within the same region. This is ideal for business critical workloads and customers that wish to protect against a possible AZ failure. No matter which deployment option is chosen, all hosts must be the same type. Host types can't be mixed within the cluster, however additional clusters with different host types can be deployed within the same SDDC. A dedicated AWS account is required in order to deploy and provide an SDDC with access to AWS services, which includes the VPC that we discussed in a previous video. The customer AWS account is connected during the deployment of the SDDC. This connection is established by executing a CloudFormation template that grants permissions to VMware via IAM roles. This will establish routing between the SDDC and the customer-created VPC. While this may sound complicated, it's completely automated. During the deployment of the SDDC, we must specify the IP address range for the management subnet. This subnet will be used to assign IP addresses to all VM kernel interfaces on the ESXi hosts, as well as all of the management appliances, such as vCenter. By default, this is set to 10.2.0.0/16. CIDR blocks of 16, 20, or 23 are supported and must be in one of the private address base blocks defined by RC 1918. The primary factor in choosing a management CIDR block is the anticipated scalability requirements of the SDDC. The management CIDR block cannot be changed after the SDDC has been deployed, so a slash 23 block is appropriate only for SDDCs that will not require much growth in capacity. You should now have a better understanding of what's needed to deploy your SDDC. In the next video, I'll walk you through a demonstration of actually deploying the SDDC. Be sure to visit VMware Cloud Tech Zone for the latest VMware Cloud on AWS resources.